In this episode of the Metabolic Experience Podcast, we have a great discussion about the popular TV show, The Office. Uh, you know, we go over, is it fun to work out or not? And then we have a bunch of really good Q&A questions that came in, and I might have even talked about how many Almond Joys I can eat in one setting. You're not gonna wanna miss this, guys. Please check it out, leave your rating and review after, and let us know what you think. So you had a long day at work yesterday. What did you guys do last night? We do what we always did last night, Matt, and that, well, there's a couple different things that we'll watch on TV. But one of them is Let's tell our audience to get their head out of the gutter. Get your let's head out of the let's gutter. get let's get focused here. <laughs> but we typically honestly we've been watching we watch the office constantly. It was like one of the first things when Brian and I first started dating, like I loved the office, he loved the office, we would watch the office whenever it was like, What do you want to watch on TV? It would be the office. So we still do that. I think we've probably watched the whole, like all of the seasons like eight times or I more. I freaking love the office. So it never good. gets old. Yes. So we were watching The Office last night, eating dinner, and um, it was the episode where um, the temp burns down, or almost burns down Dunder Mifflin, <laughs> and uh, so they're playing Desert Island outside, and so like, as I was getting ready for bed, I was kind of like sitting and thinking like, what five movies would I bring with me on a desert island, and I'm like kind of embarrassed, but I think that like two of them would be probably... Uh, if you then, say if you say Titanic, I'm, no, I might have to walk no, out right now. No, totally <laughs> Titanic, Anchorman, and Step Brothers. Oh. Like, I don't know if that like brings my IQ down. Absolutely like, not. I mean, because uh, if you're on a desert island, you're gonna be a little sad, so you need to laugh a little bit. So I think those are two awesome selections for sure. They're, they're staples. On. Like I can always watch them and I'll always laugh. Well, they're similar to The Office because every right. time you watch it, you're going to think something else is funny. Right. Like right. Michael Scott, just like that character is just so, there's so much, there's so many different layers to that character so and good. it's just so, it's just entertaining as hell. I was watching it, I watched The Office too. Kara laughs at me because during this time of year, it's a slow, I know you don't really know this, but it's a slow sports time of year. There's no hockey, there's no right. basketball, there's no football. Um, they're in the dog days of the baseball season, but half the team, my team, the Blue Jays, are out of it already. They're like Aww. 17 games under 500. So, I mean, you got to find other things. So, at night, Kara's like, you always watch The Office or Dateline? <laughs> and, like, I literally, <laughs> it's kind of true. Like, I go on demand and I'll throw on an old Dateline because I love, like, crime stuff. I'll, I'll, like, I think that stuff is super interesting. In another life, I was probably a cop. But, uh, or a murderer. <laughs> Either way, <laughs> I hope not. But uh, yeah, and uh, I also, I like to watch The Office. And uh, what episode was I watching last night? Oh, it was the one where Michael's ready to start dating again. So he, he has everyone in the office. Um, he comes out of his office. He's like, everyone open up the catalog to page 85. And they're going to talk about a product. But it's actually, do you see what that chair model looks like? I'd like you to find out if you know someone that looks like her. That's who I'd like to date. You know, and it's so just, good. it's just obnoxious. And everyone, he asks everyone around the office if they have a friend that, you know, they, he could get hooked up with and Phyllis pipes up and he kind of looks at her and just like ignores her and moves on. And I actually think he ends up connecting with the woman later in the episode. Um, but this is something I was wondering when I was watching the episode. So obviously they made her like kind of unattractive, right. um, not very pretty to be, yeah. to be polite. Um, but when you're doing like a casting call for this, she's got to know, like, no, well, even if you have kind of thick skin, it's like, oh, I'm the ugly person. Right, like, right, that's right. kind of like, that we sucks. Cast an ugly person. Yeah, or like in movies where they make fun of like heavy little kids, kind of, right, like lightly, right, but still right. like, sure. like the Truffle Shuffle in uh, Goonies, like. <laughs> Although I bet that, like in today's, like if the Goonies was to be made now, that would never be allowed. Oh, like, there's, the couple, like, there's so many aspects of that, <laughs> those, the 80s in general. Which is so good. Yeah. But I bet you like could not make it now. Yeah. Like, that's true. I guess like if I was an aspiring actress, I saw like, ooh. Yeah. The role, okay, here we go. <laughs> like, well, you got the you job. Me. You're the ugly third choice. Right. <laughs> that, yeah, that's who yeah. you are. And Michael Scott's going to make fun of you later in the episode. Right. Yeah, Congratulations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess you could... 
you can make anyone, um, especially you ladies, you guys are at a huge advantage because you can make women, you could purposely make them unattractive if you wanted to. And you can make a, a lot of them very beautiful as well. So us guys would make, there's only so much you can do. You kind of, <laughs> You kind of work with what you got. Right, and so right, right, maybe right. they paint into her look. Right. Look, you're yeah, a beautiful we're woman. Clothes. We're going to make you look like shit. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. What was that movie in that? It was like an early 90s movie. She's all that. Where they like that they like made a bet with the it was like um the like the popular kids made the the popular boy yeah. like date right, the, the, right. the, the ugly girl. Yes. Like yes. And like, who is was that Jennifer Love Hewitt? Who is the I actress in that? Was, I don't know. That's like late nineties, like I think. Jennifer yeah, Love, yeah. It was like that era. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's funny, like when she was like ugly, she just had like overalls, like paint on her face. She yeah, really always very yeah. Pretty, but like, yeah, that, that reminds me of that. What's well, amazing, like what style does for oh, making yeah. people more or less attractive? Sure. Like some people are just super naturally good looking, right. um, and. and other people, it's it's amazing. Like when you have the right clothes, the right haircut for you, and yeah, yeah. everything else, it, it really does make a pretty tremendous difference. Different guy. I feel like um, even like going from like five a.m. gym class to like when we see people out in public, oh my we're like, oh, god, who are you? Yeah. Even, well, we have, not that anybody looks unattractive. Yeah. It's just like you look so different from yeah. morning until night. It's crazy. Each one of our studios, a couple times a year, we have a social and. Um, I go to, you know, I don't go to all of them, but I, if I can, I, I like to pop in and, and be a presence, um, which is actually, if you know me, it's my nightmare. It's my living hell to have to interact a bunch of people socially at the same time. I'm kind of a smaller group. I like my wolf pack and that's kind of it, but you know, I suck it up and I'm, I'm happy to do it. I love all our clients, but um, what was I going to say? Uh, oh yes. Uh, the, when I go to like some of these socials, some of the, I'll walk by someone because I don't even think they're a client of ours and they'll be like, Matt, and I'll look at them and I'll be like, oh my God, is that you, Lindsay? <laughs> like, like, I didn't even, like the women, we had, the, we had that Meta Gala, we did, uh, we raised oh, money yeah, for, really yeah, we had basically an adult prom raising money for St. Catherine's Center for Children and it was great, it was awesome, but that was like, even, that was times 10 because oh, yeah. people were wearing evening gowns oh, and all the hair makeup, done, hair done. Hair done oh, I was yeah. just like, what is happening? Yeah, like. It was, it's pretty cool. <laughs> some of the clients get pretty dolled up for class, though. Oh, Not yeah. all of them, but yeah. some of them. So, you yeah. Know. I never have it that together. I yeah. always, like, respected and admired the women that could come in with, like, matching, like, tops and bottoms, like, the sets of clothes. Yeah. And, like, because I just, like, when I, at 5, 6 a.m., I'm just, like, yeah. I still have, like, feathers in my hair from my down pillow most well, of the time. Well, everybody knows, you know, everyone teases me because back in the day, Kara used to lay out my clothes for me the night before with, like, literally, to... no, I'm getting to that, <laughs> literally sneakers, shorts, shirt, sweatshirt, and my workout apparel as well. Yeah. That's just my clothes to wear the, to coach. And then she would lay that out. So people kind of started noticing when she started doing that because she was not teaching anymore. She was just helping me market the gym, so whatever. She had more time, less stress in her life. And then, um, you know, Caden was born. And when Caden was born, you know, Brian's about to see, I was a distant second, <laughs> as well I should be. I mean, I came in way distant in second place. So I kind of had to dress myself. And I felt like a seven-year-old because I didn't really remember how to do it. So a couple of the women, a couple of days into it, they kind of looked at me. They were like, did you pick that out yourself? <laughs> so, yeah, why? <laughs> I guess I do look like shit today. Thank you. <laughs> so... It's funny you bring that up because Drew uh, China was making fun of Drew yesterday because he had Velcro shoes on. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, she sent a picture of his Velcro shoes and his outfit to Kara and said, like, this is actually what he's going to wear to work tomorrow. Yeah. And Kara sent back a picture of the exact same shoes that Caden had. Yeah. That Drew oh, yeah, had. yeah, yeah. And Drew was like, if Caden's got them, then yeah. I'm in good style. Oh, like, he's, he's, he's the most stylish two-year-old that I know. I mean, I bring him to my barber. He gets a fade. Yeah, he's, he's, he's got nicer stylish. clothes than I have. Yeah. So uh, I don't know how. As, uh, as Kyle over here told me, he's a lot cooler than I am. So <laughs> God bless him. God bless he's him for that. The one thing I have going on is I know I'm not the cool kid, but I've always known that. So I don't try to <laughs> act like the cool kid. It's, it's worse when you're not the cool kid, but you're trying you to act, act like, like you are right. the cool kid. It's just, so that's, who you are. I told you, like, that's why I don't dance, because I know what that's going to look like. It's going to be, first of all, it's going to be a two-step with the arms in tight. Thank you, Will, for teaching Got me it. that taught me that one. It's going to be that. Um, it's not going to be anything crazy that's going to blow your socks off. And why would I dance when I can just let you guys take the floor <laughs> who can really move your bodies well through space? 
<laughs> That's one thing. If you're self awareness from being around, way. yeah, all of our staff at Metabolic, everybody dances really well. Yeah. Um, some of them think they dance better than they do, but most of them are pretty good. Sure. And actually, I think the best dancer we have on our staff, from what I've seen, and this is my subjective yeah. opinion, um, male trainer, I'm talking about you. I don't get offended. You, yeah, is uh, is is our seven footer Tyler. This guy, like he, he can really move it's his amazing. body well for a guy that's seven feet tall. Like I it's, think that's what's the most it's super impressive. He's such a mountain of a man. Yeah. And to think, to imagine that his like hips. And yeah, his hips and, he and his knee, move. like everything, that's his amazing. feet, like he's, oh, yeah. he, it's, it's really incredible. Well, and and at your wedding, but at your wedding, he was tearing it up. Oh, he was I mean, he was, up. but oh, he was yeah. nailing it. Like he did well. Oh yeah, I didn't have. I, I we didn't have to pay for entertainment. Because like I was watching a couple of our guys out there, and I was like, uh, they're kind of forcing it a little bit. <laughs> but Ty, I was like, man, like I would pay money to watch this guy dance. That's it. That's it. I also think we have to do an honorable mention to Kelsey, because Kelsey, though she may not have the best rhythm. Damn, she tries. See, I feel like, too, some of that is, I think she has better rhythm than she lets on. Yeah. I think she's kind of like me in that sense. I think she's got that, like, character she has yeah, to yeah, play, yeah, right, so right, she, right, plays right. she plays it. But yeah. she's just, I mean. I love it. Yeah. I, I love her, yeah. like, unapologetic ability to be herself. Yeah. Like, she doesn't, like you said, you, she doesn't try to be anybody no. else. She just is who she yeah. is, and she embraces it, and she rolls with it, yeah. and everybody loves her for Yeah. That. So yeah. Like My sister, ironically, is a, is a very good dancer, I think. Um, and I have scarring memories of dancing <laughs> that date back to having, I love your curse, but it's the truth, dating back to when I would have to go to her dance recitals. Uh, um, there's a studio in Albany called Eleanor's Dance yeah. Studio. It's on Central Avenue. And when my brother and I were probably, we were probably nine or 10. He was probably eight. I was probably 10. My sister was like maybe seven. And we would have to go there like two or three times a week and watch her do dance practice. We do our homework. You know, when you're nine or 10, you finish your homework in 10 minutes. Sure. So we would get in trouble because it was attached to a costume store. So we'd wander around the store, goof, you know, just being little boys. We'd get in trouble, get sent back into the dance studio. But to this day, the song, you know the song Twilight Zone? It's like, did it, did it, did it, did it, did it, did it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I know it. Because I heard that song. She was prepping for her dance recital probably 300 times. So if I hear that song, I just, it's like I have PTSD from that song. I go to a dark place. It reminds me of being a little kid and having to go to those. And then it got worse when she was in high school, starting doing more formal dancing. And, oh, the music. It was just like slow, classical. Yeah, it wasn't good. wasn't pretty. It's over now, though. Yes, made me hate dancing. But uh, speaking of dancing, which a lot of people consider to be fun, we kind of were listening to a podcast where the topic came up that the guy was basically saying that working out shouldn't be fun. And I thought that you and I kind of struck a chord with you and I. Uh, you know, we kind of have a similar viewpoint on that. But um, what did you think of that whole notion that working out should not be fun? I think it's a crazy notion. <laughs> I think, yeah. I mean, for me, I feel I, I guess it depends on as we always talk about like what your goals are, what your end goal is, and if your end goal is like to be this like fierce competitor or like to lift the heaviest weight you've ever like, maybe that workout won't be fun for you. But if like for lifestyle fitness, for me personally, absolutely, I think working out should be fun. I think if it's by enjoying the way that you work out. I think that's what keeps you coming back. That's why you continue to work out. If you don't enjoy it, how long is that gonna last? Yeah, I feel bad for this guy. I was yeah. thinking about this a little more. And here's what I, I liken it to. It's like when you play basketball or football, is it fun to sprint as fast as you can right. for 50 yards? It's exhausting. Sure. So that's not necessarily fun, but if you got your first double of the, of the season or you sprinted down the field and caught a touchdown pass, was that feeling of exhilaration fun? Right. Absolutely. And that's why people think sports are fun. There, there's immediate reward. And I think metabolic is very similar in that sense. Metabolic training, you know, you goblet squat a load you've never done before and you do it well. And when you put that weight down, that is a feeling of accomplishment that is just, that is awesome. And, and that is fun. Right, right. 
Well, like you said, it's not fun in the moment. Like, you know, when we do a complex or when we do, when it is a tough leg day or, you know, a really hard working session, when you are in the trenches, it might not be fun. But then again, you can look over your side, you see your friend, commit, you know, struggling next to you, yeah. a couple of jokes. It can be, you can have some fun with it. But yeah, that feeling of like completing it and then talking about it, yeah. and th- you know, or going home and talking to your wife or whatever about it, like that, that is what's fun about it. So in, you know, is working out fun in the moment? Maybe not, you know, but I mean, then again, you put the right playlist on and you get the right people next yeah, to you. Yeah, like, I mean, you kind of, you get that. A lot of us, it's a time for us to spend time with our friends, yeah. uh, with our spouse, our siblings. I mean, and like Lindsay said, have a little bit of fun, quote unquote, right. in between the sets, even during the sets on some yeah. lower intensity. Ex- like that's absolutely fine. And I think if we're going to, I'm going to come out with a meme. I decided, um, I almost don't want to say this idea because I don't want someone to steal it, <laughs> but it's going to be a workout pyramid hierarchy. Yeah. And I think the number one thing on the pyramid, the base of the period, biggest so to speak, block. the biggest block is sustainability. Yes. And the workout plan you're doing has got to be sustainable. Right. And part of making something sustainable is making it fun. Oh yeah, 100%. Yeah, I think that's, one, that's I, I can't, I'm trying to think of a time when like I would do something long-term that I hated. <laughs> yeah. I can't think of one instance, really. Do you know what I mean? Where like, so if, if I really, you know, even like, in terms of like career, like I changed careers because I wasn't happy in a career before, like, it's not, you're not going to continue to do something that you don't like. So I don't know what, I mean, I, I think some people take themselves, their workouts just way too seriously. Yeah. And I think that's what this all boils down to, or, you know, like it should, it should be fun. It should be hard. It can be both. <laughs> I know you don't watch Game of Thrones, but there's the, the world's strongest man, isn't it? Oh, I've um, seen that. The mountain. I the um, documentary on the world's strongest man. This dude like, is huge. freaking enormous. He's got a squat bench deadlift total of over 2,500 pounds. Just to put that in perspective, if you can do all three of those, those are over 1,000 pounds, you are a super strong human yeah. being. He can do that with 2,500 oh. pounds. The guy, he looks like a mountain. He's yeah. probably six eight. Like big, like Eastern European. I, I think he's actually like Norwegian or something. Yeah. I think he's like from Norway, um, Scandinavian. He looks like a friggin' Viking. Right. And uh, that guy might not have a ton of fun when he trains, <laughs> but he's a badass. And right, so, right, right. and I bet you, you know what? I bet you he does. Right, so, right. unless you're the world's strongest man or getting paid millions and millions of dollars to play your sport, and even then, having trained millionaire athletes myself in the past, they have fun too. Right. So, you know, again, like in, the in, in that intrinsic moment of the feat that you're doing, yeah. is that quote unquote fun? No, but why would you look at something with such a microscope like right. that? Like, why right. wouldn't you take a broader view and, and look at the bigger picture? Right. And it's just, we say it's like playing tag as a kid, playing basketball, baseball, football, you know, doing flips and cheerleading. Yeah. Like, it doesn't matter. It's just, you know, the act itself is not maybe fun, right. but the experience is fun. The experience of that 45 minute workout as a whole, which is how we view it, right. is fun. So if you're not having fun during, during your workout, I feel sorry for you. Same. Um, and change you should relax up. a little bit, change it up, have some fun. <laughs> That's right. And look at the broader picture. Yeah. Is it not fun in the moment, but are you enjoying the results from it? Then it's fun. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> It's not like going to the dentist. That's not fun. <laughs> no that's part of that is fun. Thing that yeah. that is. There, that's the thing yeah. that I do. That yeah. I, yeah. That I, that you don't I, leave there feeling fulfilled, rewarded. Right. Yeah. Oh, it's nice to have clean teeth. Yeah. I, feel like I just get yelled at for not flossing. I just, tell, I just tell them straight up now. I'm just like, look, I didn't floss. That's why I'm here. <laughs> Let's just get that out of the way. <laughs> like, I love it. Honesty. It here. works though because I always got used to it. You know, I'm not, now we just skip that whole thing. That's you know, it. I'm sorry to gross out our listeners. <laughs> I know you guys don't do it either. <laughs> do you know who does floss all the time? Brian. No, Drew. Oh, he does. Yes, I did know that. I've seen yeah. him floss many yeah. times. I didn't realize when we uh, were on the cruise two years ago together working, uh, I'll never forget it because we had dinner and then before you like leave to depart on these He's cruises, got great teeth. They've got, he does. They've got to do these um, basically like emergency drills. So if the boat was, a, they call it a ship, if the ship was going to sink, 
you all like the whole ship is split up into different areas. So you go to your area and then they take you to your lifeboats. So it's like a trial. So you've got oh, to wow. like run through that before <laughs> they leave and depart. Oh. So Drew and I, we were starving. So we went to the cafeteria and ate and then the drill went off and he was freaking out because he couldn't floss yeah. his teeth after he had eaten. And I really enjoyed flossing that much. That he much. Was. He was like, yeah. I, just, I just need some floss. Yeah, no, I, but he got it eventually. But I was going to say, I, I, I hear well. that, but I, I hear the words you're saying, but I, I don't hear that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not that big of a deal to me. Well, he's got great, a great smile. We've talked a lot about adult gym class, working out, should it should be no, fun, no. the office, <laughs> yeah, the Goonies. <laughs> We do have some Q&As to get through today, so let's get to it. Um, the first one we'll ask is from, let's see, Kfu Energy 18 What are some thoughts or tips from when you are full at the end of the day, but you still have macros left to eat? Well, I don't really have many thoughts or tips because that has never happened to me in my life. <laughs> yeah. But um, Same, yeah. same. Yeah, I'm... Uh, but I, I have heard this before. I think especially when people are first starting macros and the protein might be higher than what they're typically used to eating. Um, protein is obviously very satiating. It takes your body a long time to break it down. Um, it has to work hard to break it down so it can make you feel very full. Um, so, uh, I mean, honestly, if you're intermittent fasting and you're really having a hard time uh, hitting all your macros, you have a ton of them at the end of the day, you might want to consider moving your first meal a little bit earlier. Um, that way you're not loading it all up at the end. Whereas, you know, like Matt and I, we like to intermittent fast, or at least I used to before I was pregnant, um, because of that reason, because I wanted that big voluminous meal at the end of the night. But for this person, if you're having a really hard time, uh, maybe change up the way that you're eating, bring some of your protein in earlier in the day. Um, that way you're not feeling like you're choking down chicken at the end of the night. Yeah, I think you nailed it. I think if you're the type of person with a large appetite and that's never an issue for you, smaller, or excuse me, less frequent, larger meals, are going to be more applicable to you. I think if you're the type of person who doesn't really have a huge appetite, that's probably not the best approach for you to right. use. I will say this though, people always complain, I'm eating so much. It's like, no, you know, you're just eating cleaner and right. in the right ratio, quote unquote cleaner, in the right ratios. So like, you know, you're no longer dousing your pan with 800 calories of olive oil, which doesn't do anything to right. fill you up. You know, instead you're having chicken and vegetables and fruit and oatmeal and right. things that actually provide substance and fiber and sure. fill you. So I would say too, as your metabolism changes, the deeper you get into a macro cycle, you'll find that when you start losing body fat, you're gonna get hungry and hungry and hungry. The more right. body fat you have, the less hungry you're probably gonna tend to feel a lot of the time. Um, and the easier it is to fight through that, but the leaner and leaner you get, like, That's especially nice. if you've been dieting for a little while, like you're gonna, you're gonna feel it. So that same amount of food that used to stuff you and make you so right. full, um, as your metabolism speeds up and enhances, that's definitely not going to be the case oh, anymore. Oh yeah, I always think about, you know, if you take like a 350 calorie bagel and like 350 calories of chicken, what a difference. Oh. It's, the, it's 350 calories, you know what I mean? But like the difference and trying to like eat 350 calories of chicken would be so much more challenging than eating a bagel. Like a bagel, you don't even think about it. You chuck, you chuck it down, it's gone. Yeah, so yeah. for dinner the other night, I had a 60 calorie bag of cauliflower rice, the whole bag, which yeah. is like a lot. Probably about two cups of vegetables uh, or so, uh, six to eight ounces of chicken somewhere there, and that, um, I forgot the name of the company. Oh, the Hughes barbecue sauce. Have you oh, tried that? Yeah, it's yeah. So, so good, good. it's so good. You could have a decent amount of it for like 30 calories. Right. I was like, holy crap this whole meal has like 450 calories. And like, right. honestly, you could have a, a bagel or two donuts, bam, gone. And like and uh, half of my version of half a bowl of cereal, because my bowls <laughs> of cereal are honestly probably seven or 800 calories sure. um, when I can eat them. But yeah, so funny how that works. Yep, yeah. So um, I would maybe recommend, like we said, kind of push your first meal the first, a little bit earlier and that should maybe help you uh, spread those out a little bit. And don't tell anyone that you're having trouble hitting your macros. Yeah, they don't like you. Yeah, they're going to slash your tires. <laughs> uh, Carrie Ann 237 says, you are a franchise now. What separates you from other gyms? Yeah, you know, I think this is a great question and one that we're going to receive a lot as we, as we continue to expand and grow. There's a couple components of it. The, the first that I'll just touch on is we do metabolic training, which is essentially a full body strength training workout done at a pace 
there's a lot of people out there trying to do what we do, but they don't really captivate what we do uh, by focusing on the development of physical strength with limited rest periods um, and really applying metabolic training properly and appropriately. It's oh, yeah. not a boot camp. It's not CrossFit. It's not, it's not HIT. It's not, it's not a treadmill workout. And there's nothing wrong with any of those things, but that's not what we do. What we do is metabolic training and we do it better than anybody else out there. The name of the style of training is, is our business, right? So, I mean, it kind of says it all right there, but this has been my passion and my obsession for the last six years. And it's taken me years to fine tune and cultivate this philosophy to get it to the point where we're kind of a well-oiled machine now with our programming. And, you know, I've taught you how to program as well. And, you know, that, that's a huge differentiator with us. It's the way we program our workouts. The other thing I'll say is honestly, straight up, it's community. Right. The trendy thing in fitness right now is to say brick and mortar's dying, those in-person gyms are dying. And that might be true for some people, but for us it's the opposite because we sell people that third place where you can go to work, you can go home. This is the third place that you're gonna spend your time at during the day. And you grow to become great friends with the people in your community. It brings you together, draws you closer to your spouse, mm -hmm. um, you know, makes you feel better about yourself in a way that a Peloton bike in your basement can't. Right. I feel like I should, we should just mic drop it right there. <laughs> just nailed it. I think that's exactly what separates us from other gyms. You, the, the community, the programming. And I think because you, like you said, you spent years fine tuning how to do metabolic training in a group training atmosphere. And because you are, um, and I say this respectfully, so OCD and so obsessed with getting it right, yep. that you've created this, this product that you really can provide a personal training experience in a group training class where people are, they're getting the benefits of it all. They're getting the benefits of private training because you're getting the personal push that you need. You're getting the benefits of a group training class because you have the community around you that you love. You're getting the, you're getting stronger because you're getting the benefits of the metabolic training where we really focus on solid strength training. So I think, um, you know, again, I don't want to go into too, too much because you said it perfectly, but I think what separates us is just, is the total package. It's it, everything, it's just all in one and, and it makes sense. And it's uh, 45 minutes and that's all you need. Yeah, you know, very well said. And I'll just add one last little thing to that that I think is honestly a big differentiator. And some of our competitors out there, I see them doing this too. So sure. we're not completely unique, but I do think it separates us from a lot is that our trainers and our staff, they genuinely believe in metabolic training. They don't just, they don't just do it to make a, like put on a show and then they go do like a bodybuilding workout. Like this is what they do. Yeah. And they absolutely, they eat hundred yeah. percent and they love it. So um, when you have trainers that are that passionate about the workout themselves, a lot of my trainers started as clients, yeah. you know, that were athletes in high school and college. And I used to train way back in the day and now they've grown into adults and right. are working for me. Um, you know, that's it. That's a huge part of it too. Well, I know clients say it all the time too, that they, um, they love working out next to the trainers, you know? So like, I think that that helps to build the community as well. Like we're not against our clients. We're with you guys. Like we're, we're, we're all part of the same team um, going after the same goal. So yeah, I think you're absolutely right. The trainers are just, we, we love this. Don't give away all our secrets. Sure. We don't want people <laughs> copying us. They can try. <laughs> they already have. That's right. I was actually thinking about it the other day. Like, how many coffee shops there are out. There's like, there's mom and pop coffee right. shops, there's Dunkin' Donuts, there's Starbucks, there, and they can all coexist. But like the other day, I was actually on Father's Day. I asked Brian, I said, do you want to go get a coffee? And you know, want me to go get your coffee? And he was like, yeah, I'll go with you. I'm going to go along. And I was like, all right. And like, there's a couple different coffee shops we'll go to. And he said, um, he's like, you know what? Let's go to Starbucks because I know they won't screw it up. So like <laughs> there's, there's something about consistency. Yeah. And like, I think that's something that there's a million other businesses right. out there. There's, there's a, you can go get coffee at a hundred other coffee shops. But when you find the one that's consistent, that's the one you're going to keep going back yep. to. And I think that's something that we can say we are consistent. I, I love that. I love that. <laughs> um, moving on to the next question. More hops, please. I wonder if this guy's a beer drinker. <laughs> um, I say guy. It's a great girl. name. <laughs> um, more hops, please. Says, you, know, you know it's a guy. Um, I know it's a guy. I know who this is. What up, Elton? <laughs> um, or Elliot, geez. Uh, what are some tips to continue fat loss when you've hit a plateau? 
Well, the first thing I'll say is to have less hops, please. <laughs> <laughs> right? No, um, honestly, I think plateaus and fat loss are kind of misunderstood. I think a lot of people think they're on a plateau when it's just part of the process. I've used this analogy before, I'll say it again. Losing weight and losing body fat is like going down a staircase, right? You're gonna have a drop, and then you're gonna have a flat point. I'm motioning my hands, not everyone can see me, but that's all right. <laughs> There's gonna be a drop and then a flat part. Sometimes, especially at the beginning, it's like drop, flat part, drop, flat part. The flat parts are small. As you get leaner and leaner and leaner and leaner and deeper into the process, the flat parts are longer. But if you had to walk with your feet physically along the flat parts and you just quit and stopped, you would never go down the stairs. But right. if you just keep going, if you just keep moving forward, you will. Um, some basic things you can do. Um, if you've a genuine plateau to me is a, is a three week period of time where your your weekly body weight average has not gone down. Right. That's why I, I actually believe in daily weigh-ins and taking the average of the daily body weight. If you really want to track things, I never want to do that at the expense of someone's psychological and sure. mental health if they can't quite handle that. That's what I do myself, and it's been enlightening. You know, yeah. like because in the past I would weigh myself on a random Thursday or Saturday or Tuesday, and I'd be upset or happy with a stupid number on the scale right. said now because I take a daily body weight I understand the ebbs and flows but I'm looking at that weekly average which has trended yeah. down in my cutting phase that I'm in yeah. so um, I think that's super important to understand that but if you have hit a tr plateau and that weekly average has not shifted maybe like three weeks or so I think you might be due for a diet break you know right. just and that means just you know get reset some of the hormones in your body elevate leptin decrease cortisol um you know restore your met metabolism that's a that's a big part of it uh and the way you do that is you just eat at maintenance calories which for most people honestly it's probably five or six hundred calories more than you're eating now right. do that for maybe two weeks and then almost every single time when you go back to those calories you're on bam that right. weight's gonna shoot right off yeah um yeah i think again answered that perfectly um and i just want to say like and i know you had touched on it but i want to make it i want to touch on it again that like i think people are so quick to jump on the plateau word so like hey did you just not lose weight this week <laughs> because if it was like a one week thing that's not a plateau so make sure that like i mean we're talking about like no movement over a month two months, you know what I mean? A consistent period of time, then you might want to, then you can consider it a plateau. If you've been consistent, if you're being honest about being consistent, because we also know that some people, us included, maybe aren't tracking, you know, a little creamer in the coffee at Stewart's or like a little this, a little that, and then crying plateau. Right. Whereas if we are really strict, cut that stuff out, we also can notice a dip and drive too. So I think there's a couple different layers to it, um, but uh, make sure, you know, before you start to like get frustrated and get down that you have actually, you know, given yourself and your body time to get through that and then make the adjustments, go on a diet break or, or something like that to help get back through it. Yeah, I think you, you crushed that and just being honest, you know, I think something I've done with a lot of my, and I'm not saying people are lying, it's just, oh. People, you, you want to get the results. You want to do things, you know, as fast as you can. And but you also like food because you're a human. So I, yeah. I totally get that. Something I do though, when people think they're in a plateau, I'll have a lot of my macro clients send me a food log, mm -hmm. and they'll list out the foods they. And then I'll start seeing things in there like, uh, you know, one serving of vanilla checks or you know, right. one tablespoon of peanut butter. When I start seeing those highly palatable things, yeah. I'm like, was it one serving of peanut butter? <laughs> Are you right. measuring that? And a lot of them are like, well, I kind of eyeballed it. It was probably like two or three, to be, right, if I'm being honest. Right, right. And like take something like peanut butter, like two or three tablespoons compared to one, that's 100, 200, or 300 calories, which oh, right. can make or break you. Um, and you do that every single day. Yeah. You know, that's seven to 900 calories over yeah. the course of a week. I mean, that's, that's a lot. So um, absolutely, like be honest with yourself. That's why I, when I'm deep in a dieting phase, I tend to not, uh, you know, I really try to eat more. I don't say not stay away from palatable foods because I like fruit sure. and vegetables and things like that. But the processed stuff, that's just, it's unbelievable how right. easy it is to overeat. On Saturdays in my first meal, pretty much eat the same thing I always eat, but I do allow myself one large bowl of cereal. I cut it there. It works well for me because it makes it so I don't, want to go nuts for the rest of the day. The other thing is I usually have a few beers on Saturday afternoon, so I'm not a drunken mess after two beers and Perfect. 600 calories. Um, now it's like four, but that's it though, guys. I don't go much crazier than that. But uh, no, so like I think 
you know, but when I pour this 600 calorie bowl of cereal, I'm like, geez, like I could eat literally three of oh, these. Yeah, if that was oatmeal and apples in that, I would puke. Yeah, <laughs> like sure. it's, it's oh, crazy yeah. what a difference it makes. So the bottom line, just be honest with yourself. Uh, but I don't know if you remember when I was on prep, I was stuck at 120 for a, like weeks. We couldn't figure it out. We couldn't figure it out. And then I figured it out. I was coaching at the time. And before every class, I was popping a Lifesavers mint oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. into my mouth without even considering it. And I think I was eating over 100 grams of carbs in mints. Yeah. Because I wasn't counting them into my macros. Yeah. I was just, and you were like, there's got to be, we're missing something. Yeah. There's got to be something. And I was like, I have mints. If I remember correctly, too, I think you were like chugging Walden Farms by the bottle. Oh, <laughs> Walden, <laughs> the, 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 Walden <laughs> Farms, there's not a magical place called Walden where there's no <laughs> calories. <laughs> The, I was like, more pink there's pink a pink very pink low pink amount pink of calories probably for most of you out there you could log it you could not yeah. log it but there are for people on preps some oh, calories yeah. in Walden so so I dropped those mints too because they are candy 100 <laughs> percent. even though they taste like mint um Aubrey Conti wants to know at what age do you think you will stop doing metabolic workouts honestly I just because the workouts are so adaptable to any age and any population I don't think age is a restriction for me honestly yeah. like just because especially I've done them uh, I started doing them in my early 30s um, and I don't see any reason why I wouldn't do them as long as I work out it's kind of like someone asking why at what age are you gonna stop making fitness a right. part of your lifestyle and this is what I do like yeah. this is what I love it's the only thing I know I think one of the coolest things about metabolic that might be misunderstood by some people out there if they see a Instagram video of, of myself or one of the, yourself or one of the other trainers doing a bunch of exercises that that's the only way to do it. Um, I had my mom in class this morning. I taught a class. Um, my mom was there. She's 66 years old. We didn't do everything that you know the 35, 25 year old people were doing. It, we, we did different things that addressed mobility, range of motion. She got a lot out of it. They got a lot out of it. Right. Everybody wins there. So as long as you're being intelligent about your exercise selection, there really is no limit. With that said, it does get to be a slippery slope. And I hate to categorize people, but if you're kind of a senior citizen, I'd say over the age of 65, you can't look at comparing yourself to other people and get competitive. You got to kind of pay attention to your heart rate a little more, kind of keep sure. that a little bit lower, um, you know, and just be mindful of that. And probably starting to emphasize mobility over anything else and just moving your body is the goal. Because at, at that age, you're probably not looking to build a bigger butt. Right. You're probably just looking to retain as much lean body mass as you That's can. It. Maintain, retain, and stay strong. Yeah, I'm hoping to do them for the rest of my life. I mean, I don't... I don't see a point where I'll ever need to stop, you know, maybe slow down a little bit. But yeah, I mean, um, it's funny. I did a solo podcast this morning. And one of the things that I talked about with working out was that like, I want to be strong and healthy throughout my like golden years. So like, you know, if, if you're, you know, retired and you're traveling to Italy or wherever you, and you want to be able to like walk around and not get tired and not get exhausted and, and stay strong and have the strength to do that. And by continuing metabolic workouts, that'll happen. You can do that. <laughs> yeah, I can yeah. do that. You know what I mean? So like you said, obviously just, you know, not being competitive with it. Yeah. And kind of running your own race. But um, yeah, I don't plan on stopping. Just so. don't be stupid. Be just smart. Be stupid. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> All right. How do you guys come up with the names for the templates? Chelsea Cran wants to know that. Hmm. Um, well, it all started with Drew one day. I think, was he, did he name Thunder and Lightning? Was that the first one that he named? I don't know if it started with Drew, but we'll go with this. <laughs> he, he, did, he came up with a couple, like, for sure. Throwing a couple names yeah, on yeah, the board, yeah. and then it just yeah. kind of rolled just kind of rolled. You guys had the conversation. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, honestly, usually we just try to think of things that, like, kind of make sense. So with, like, Thunder and Lightning, you have one minute of strength, a five-second break, 30 seconds right. of cardio. So Thunder is a stronger, you know, slower thing. Lightning is a quick jolt. So... That's where Thunder and Lightning came from. Yeah. Um, we have ones like uh, Gauntlet where you go through a series. Of, it yeah. feels like you're running through a gauntlet. Uh, rewind, you go through exercises, then you go backwards. Right. Three and three, three sets of one exercises. I just held up two fingers. Thank <laughs> God not everyone can see that. 
three sets of the other, you know, we, we go through a variety of things in that way, but yeah, just having fun with it. Sometimes we do things that are just not even related to the title, like right. hurricane, just cause I don't know why I felt like calling it hurricane. I always say with hurricane cause it starts out big and scary and then it like winds away yeah. like a hurricane yeah. well, cause it starts out bigger and then it goes down. Um, I think I did that after I visited my brother in New Orleans and had a hurricane. And so after that workout, I felt like I'd had a couple <laughs> hurricanes. Hurricane. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, our most recent was America. Yeah. And that was because we all had to feel patriotic. And as I said online, that should have been called O Canada because that's where everyone was moving after that damn thing. That's not true. That was that's terrible. True. We all felt just these colors don't run. That's it. America's there. <laughs> um. Let's see, we got some more questions on here. So Elizabeth T089 said, what are your trainer's tricks for remembering hundreds of members' names? Well, there's a couple parts to this. Number one, because I used to yell at them if they didn't. <laughs> so that's always part of it. No, but honestly, that what I've taught them over the years is you just have to say people's names like till you're blue in the face. So when I meet someone for the first time, hey, I'm Matt, hi, I'm Lindsay. Great, Lindsay, welcome to Metabolic. Here's what you can expect. Now, Lindsay, do you have any questions? So I've said her name three or four times, but your name, by the time we're even done with the intro, mm -hmm. then in the class, I'm gonna be like, hey, Lindsay, you doing okay? How's it going, Lindsay? Like, I'm just gonna say it a hundred times so that I remember it. And then the key is you gotta see them kind of sure. in the near future, yeah. use it again, and it's usually in there. I always tell, I have, we have 2,700 clients, guys, so I'll be honest, I don't know everybody's name by face, but at the same time, I, I feel confident that I know most of them if I could see a multiple choice. Like the right. names are in there. Sometimes yeah. it's hard to extract them in time. But, um, and then, you know, we cheat a little bit as trainers because we have the Mind Body app. So when the rosters comes up, uh, a lot of times I'll just be like, you know, what, what's your last name again? And they'll tell me their last name and then I'll see their first. I'll be like, right. Smith. All right. <laughs> Jones? Oh, okay. <laughs> How do you spell your last name? <laughs> oh, yeah. And, uh, I'll say like from the trainer side of it, when your job depends on knowing people's names, you learn people's names. But I think, you know, you instilled in us, you know, from day one that, you know, how can you build a community? You know, when you're working with people, it's it's out of respect that yeah. you call them by first name. So when you don't think of it as just like remembering a name, but you think of it as being respectful towards the people that you are going to be training, you it gives you more reason and more desire to really get that name down because you feel like a jerk if they walk in and they're like, hey, Lens, and you're like, hey, girl. Yeah. Like it just, it, hey, it you. Just work, you know what I mean? So, you know, it's definitely a, it's a sign of respect. So, um, it's yeah. also embarrassing when you see someone and they, they act so familiar oh, with you course. and they know your name. Yeah. Like you see someone in Target or Hannaford or a grocery store and they're like, Matt, what's up? And I'm just like, hey, you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're not in gym clothes, oh. so I can't figure out. That, we do help each other out as trainers. So like yeah. I, you kind of, if someone falls on the sword sometimes oh, and just, just asks. Yep, yep. And sometimes we, you just that's all you have to do yeah. is say, like, listen, I know I know your name, but for some reason my mind is just blown. People are cool, too. I've noticed a lot of people of late, especially, they'll come up to you and be like, I know you don't know me that well. I'm Stacy or I'm Tom or I'm Tony or I'm Amanda, right. whatever it is, and they help. Yeah, for sure. Um, all right. I don't know if this will be our last question, but... Oh, I think it's going to be. I'm excited about this one because Tobe426 wants to know... How many Almond Joys can you eat in one shot? So I'll start this with saying more than you, Tobe 426. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, so no, this is a very important point. So the Almond Joy candy bar is, Almond Joys have nuts, mountains don't, so right. the coconut, chocolate, and nuts. Okay. But it, the candy bar comes in two segments that are like medium sized. Right. The fun size bar is a little bit smaller than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So are we talking about each of those individual candy bars that come in the original packaging, or are we talking about the fun size bars? Oh, uh, let's go original packaging. Okay, original packaging. Original. So the all yeah. So how many almond joy original packaging can you eat in one shot? We put them right out on this I table mean, right here. Now I haven't <laughs> eaten, and it's like past <laughs> noon, and I've been up since three thirty. So eating about ten of those bars, twenty sound twenty total. I can put down twenty. I'm very confident. Very confident. Now it's twenty. Like ten, ten bars, ten broken, bars into broken into two. Yeah. Ten, that's all you think you can do? Is I mean, I don't want to say something more aggressive <laughs> than that in case I get baited into actually having to do this. Ten is something I could do and not puke. Okay, so. yeah. 
I, I, it sounds I small. I just, yeah, but but I see what you're saying because it's actually twenty. Because yeah, there's two of them. Same. I mean, it would be it would be, it would be enjoyable. I mean, I to a point it would be, but then point. if you were in a challenge, it gets a little heavy. After you ever watch Man vs. Food? Like oh, there yeah. comes a point in time when he's so excited and he's enjoying the food, he's coming yeah. great, and then you can see the discomfort set in, it's and he's it. like, usually he's not even halfway through the meal. Yeah. Oh. yeah. I think I could keep up with you. Though. I feel like I could eat twenty almond joys. We'll have to find out. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any? You're cheating though. You have another person helping you. No, he's taking up all the room in my stomach. <laughs> yeah. He, he likes almond joys. <laughs> all right. Well, this was fun. Always a good time. When always we get a great to, time. Uh, do a little Q and A and talk about the office. So, as always, guys, we appreciate you listening. If you loved what you heard, leave us a review. Five stars. Make sure you're tagging us on Instagram if you're listening to this while you're walking the dog, washing the car, going for a drive. Shoot a screenshot. We'd love to see it. And uh, yeah, we'll talk soon. Talk soon, guys.